Hey friends, I'm Tess Janich and you're listening to the Link Sisterhood podcast. Today we're diving into a series of conversations around the Grove Conference with some of my special friends and team. Whether you're tuning in on your morning commute or stealing a quiet moment in your day, I want to invite you to lean in, open your heart and get ready to hear from God. Tess, and I want to welcome you to the Sisterhood Podcast. I hope that wherever you are watching in the world, that you will encounter the voice of your father through our conversation here today. And I am very excited and grateful to have back with me to our fifth and final Grove conversation. Yay, come on. My friends, Ash and Kali. And we are going to be talking today about creativity. Yay. Come on. Yes, <laughs> come I know. On. Two very creative individuals Love sitting it. with me today. I feel like I'm just going to facilitate a conversation um, and not perhaps contribute it contribute to it that much. But um, one of the things that we know is that the Grove Conference is wildly creative. Yes. Yes. Uh, Passion City Church is led by two very creative people who believe in creativity. They yeah. believe that God is a creator yeah. and ministers to us through his creation. Definitely, and yeah. so it's very much a part of everything that they are and do. And I know both of you have been following the Grove Conference for many years because of that very thing, yeah. because of yeah. the way they have put creative things together. Yeah, and so we wanted to have a little conversation today about that, what it means to um, steward the gift of creativity within us and how we bring that to our church. And what does that mean for people? Why do we do it? So those are some things we're going to talk about. And so why don't you each take a moment to just fill us in or fill wow. the, uh, <laughs> speak to our, the girls or the guys watching today, um, just about what you saw in terms of creativity at the Grove. Like what was your personal experience of creativity there? Mm. So um, like you mentioned earlier, <clears throat> the Grove is something we've been following yeah. for a while yeah. and would reference their work Often, definitely, yeah. when we get together and we brainstorm um, for our women's ministry space here, we we pull from different places just to be inspired. And yeah. the Grove has been such a standout for us because um, I just think what they bring is really excellent. Yeah, mm. yeah. But what I experienced having now gone there um, is that they bring themselves, like the church, what is unique to them, which is Passion Church to their space when yeah, they're creating. Which, is amazing. which I felt quite empowering yeah. because as creatives, you actually don't want to replicate. Yeah. You want to, yes, be inspired, yeah. but you want to bring through what is authentic to you and yeah. for us, this house, through the things that we create. And I felt so empowered by seeing the way that passion and the grove mm. um, steward their creativity in the way that they narrate their spaces. Yeah. And wow. it and looks and feels like passion. That's yeah, very that's cool. beautiful. And yeah. so, um, yeah, that spoke to me. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think for me what spoke to me was um, how they can use something so simple yet so profound mm. in the way God is speaking to them yeah. within creativity. Yeah. And um, it was just such a like an honor to mm. I remember walking through the moment of walking into Grove, they opened the doors and we had a moment, very special moment to walk in there before anyone yeah. else was, was in a, there. A little tour, yeah. And yeah. I was just, my breath was taken away. Yeah. And it was just so beautiful to see how that, how they use things that God has created within like life and nature yeah. in everything in words um, and how they created, made that come to life in such yeah, simple ways, but also um, such depth. Yeah. And um, it was so special to just like, walk through, see what they'd built, yeah. seeing the behind the scenes, obviously Ash yeah. and I and Ams and Tess would have been seeing the behind the scenes yeah. of the little posts that they were posting, the reels. And it was just so exciting because you almost like go on this journey, but you don't know what to expect. Yeah. And then you walk in there and you're like, oh my word, okay. Mm. And we can see the huge yellow beams that they put up and where the flowers have gone and yeah. the vinyls they've printed and the attention to detail yeah. mm. um, for me spoke 
really spoke to my heart yeah. Yeah. in the simplest things and yeah. Mm. Yeah, the lavishing. I think mm. one thing as well when it comes to creativity, which speaks to me, is when you keep the main thing the main thing. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's something that they did well. They would have like an anchor scripture or an anchor message that they wanted yeah. them to hear. And whether you picked yeah. up a water bottle yeah. or whether you opened a journal, yeah. that was being yeah, translated. So and for us, that is helpful because you don't need to be running in a million directions yeah. and making everything look beautiful. Actually, the main thing is the main thing, yeah. and that's Jesus. And what do you want people to know and feel yeah. when they're picking up something tangible? Mm. Are you communicating that main thing? Yeah. yeah. So that stood out to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they did it beautifully. So um, they based their whole conference really around that scripture in Psalm 89 that talks about how prayer, we know the passwords of praise. Yeah. It's praise that unlocks the inheritance. It's praise that unlocks the presence of God. Um, and so it was just amazing to see how that was dropped into everything. You yeah. Know, the passwords of praise. So they were they were selling necklaces with little locks on them. Yeah. Um, and the stickers had you know scriptures on them and um our wristbands had that scripture mm. on uh, the the whole look and feel of that psalm seemed to come through like in itself. every part yeah. of um so what you're saying is exactly true they kept themselves very true actually to what they felt was the the essence yeah. of yeah. what God was trying to say and i loved that because before you'd even heard a word preached yeah. Um, for me, my mind was so um, was exposed to this incredible truth, yeah, um, incredible thought that actually my praise can unlock things, yeah, it's um, beautiful, and that was communicated without one word, yeah, it was communicated through creativity, yeah. absolutely, and, they and open that's super doors, powerful. Yeah. I think it opens hearts. It does. It does. It um, disarms you as well totally. because you almost don't expect to be ministered to through creativity. No. And that's actually when yeah. it catches you. Yeah. <laughs> I love that so that's love that. one of their favorite things to do. And I think Ash, you hold this so well mm. too, is bringing the character of God to life mm. through creativity that we may be molded through the oh, wow. creativity mm. that we walk into in a conference or in a, a simple moment in church that that may mold us into the character of, of what Jesus yeah. is. And I think that is so beautiful. And yeah. actually, I think that's ordained by God. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So good. Okay. So um, as creative people, you're not only creating, you're also um, you're taking in so much creativity. Yes. I know yes. what creative people are like. I'm one. It shows itself up in different ways. But um, as creative people, I feel we are, um, there's so much that we absorb that yes. that we look to feed that that desire Absolutely. to create, yeah. you know? <laughs> and um, so Constantly. I wanted to, talk, perhaps you could talk to this for a little while, is a, a personal experience you've had where uh, creativity has met you and ministered to you personally and how that's perhaps um, inspired you to continue to create in your own life um, mm. in whatever capacity that is. Yeah, that's um, oh, yeah. wow. You can go first, Ash. So many. <laughs> I feel like my salvation is because of creativity, yeah. to be honest. Wow. God met me through creativity huge, and, wow. and more specifically even through through music. Yeah. Um, I grew up in um, a, a household where we didn't really do church and I got um, saved quite young. And I was a singer, I was a vocalist from very, very young. And one of my friends, we were doing like classical recitals and she said, you know, I'm in a band. And I was like, that's really cool. <laughs> no. And I was like 11, I was like 10, 11. I want to be like, in the band. I, I want to be in the band. Like she's like, <laughs> It's a church band. And I was like, church people, like, have have, they have creative bands. Like, <laughs> Rock what? and roll never dies. So I remember, <laughs> literally, so I went to my mom and I was like, please, can you drop me off at this place? This is the church um, at Sanam Um, You don't need to be there. I would just like to be part of the band. Thanks. So she drops me off at church. And in between all of that, and I was young, so, so I was still actually in kids' church, yeah. realistically. Yeah, so great. 11, I was basically in All Stars, yeah. uh, just before transit age. So... And I experienced this like 
fun like Jesus that yeah, actually was special. far from boring yeah. and also comes with really cool music. Like you can worship him and like through these ways that I never, never caught a glimpse of before. Mm. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I just so badly want to be part of the story. Yeah. Not even in the band anymore. I was like, I'll join the band when I'm ready. Like I just want to be in church. Like yeah. this is so cool and fun actually. Mm. So creativity and music is what captured my heart from a young age and brought me I guess, into this beautiful relationship with Jesus. And then throughout high school, I was in denial that I was a creative. I mean, I knew I was, but I was adamant I was going to be a vet. I did all the science subjects and all the fun things. And Ashley. And it's so funny because your parents know and my parents are like, you're going to be a creative. And I was like, you can't do that, like as a career. Like, what is yeah. that? That's not a thing. Um, and crazy enough, like God took me on this whole long spiral that planted me here. In the work in this at Link Church in a creative space, and I went to a conference in Australia with um, Dylan Dubs. We went to Hillsong, and I'd always known at that stage I got it completely pulled my attention towards creativity in the church and how I got to play a part in that story. But um, Cass Langston got on stage and she spoke a message. uh, She brought a message around like God being this artisan, and I'd never seen him that way. Um, that beautifully and that clearly until that conference experience. Mm. And I think being able to see um, the gospel brought to life through Mm. performing arts, visual arts, and seeing actually that God is, before he did anything, he created. Mm. He could have done anything, but in the beginning, God created. And I think that for me has just captured my attention from the Mm. beginning. So, yeah, I can relate to him. That's Mm. amazing. Yeah. Mm. And then he uses you to then take you, the gift that he's placed mm. in you to create that for other people yeah. to see him. Yeah. Um, we've spoke about this earlier, you know, going through hard things. This is not the same, but we go when we go through hard things, like Catherine Wolf said, yeah. Yeah. Um, that God allowed something, that took her through something so that others may oh, know him. Yeah. And see him, and I think it's beautiful that you've allowed your own creative journey mm. to then be expressed, oh, yeah. so that other people yeah. would see him. Yeah, it's beautiful. Carl's in a moment that you can think of. Um, yes. <laughs> so for me, um, I loved being creative. I've always loved to paint and all the little things. Um, I did art and drama in school. Um, after I realized, kind of similar to Ash. <laughs> Realized that maybe being a doctor was the uh, bet or <laughs> um, good in theory. <laughs> anything else was not for me and it's not how my brain was wired. Mm. Um, so I went on that little journey. Uh, then I went to study teaching and in teaching creativity is there. And I knew I had a heart for it, but it was a moment when I had the privilege of coming alongside you and building mm. Little Link and... Um, where my creativity came to life and was the allowing of me um, spaces to just be like, this is what's happening. This is what we're looking at Mm -hmm. and allowing me a vision to build and then go with it. So it was like setting up an Easter photo booth, which is so silly. It's such a simple little thing, but it's like a photo booth or painting the kids' church walls. Um, It was things like that, that birthed in me and, uh, maybe re lit a flame in me that was like you have got this in you and you can yeah yeah um so God has taken me on a journey in in believing in that but also real, realizing that I'm capable and I can and that he's mm-hmm. given me a gift and we all have these different gifts yeah that God actually wants us all to come together yeah. and like build something mm-hmm. and show his character and I think that was for me being in kids church realizing that through even creativity there, we get to paint the picture for mm. them mm. in who God is. And, um, yeah, so also being on a journey of realizing I came alongside Michael and building a creative business. So cool. <laughs> which I never thought would, you know, be possible. And it's, yeah, um, designing furniture. If you asked me in school, I'd be like, what? <laughs> never. I don't even know how to make a piece of furniture (laughs) um but yeah God has given me and I think for me that's been a huge realizing that God has given me a huge vision to see things in forms yeah 
that I didn't realize because yeah. I would sit there and be in a moment where I'm like, how did I think of that? Like yeah. I can't even put into words how I mm-hmm. thought or designed something up. And um, I think those are moments of a journey where God just revealing to me that I'm capable. I love that. Um, revealing to me through all he has yeah. created around yeah. me and bringing yeah. it to the table in my own vision. Yeah. And I alongside other people. Mm, yeah. I love that. Um, Solomon says, I think it's in, um, it's other than Ecclesia. I think it's in Ecclesia. He says these words, like there is nothing new under the sun. Yeah. And I've always loved that because I feel like with creativity, what we do is we take what's already there yeah. and we just put it on display. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Come people, come and have a look and see the yeah. great things that God has done. And yeah. so you know what that does for me is it removes the competition. Yes. So we can go oh, yeah. to a conference like Grove. We can go and visit a church down the road. We can go and uh, be in people's um, spaces and places that are doing similar work to us yeah. and, and also be inspired and also be ministered to. Yeah. And, Absolutely. Um, because That's there's the nothing new under the yeah. sun. Yeah. It's all God's creation and everybody is taking what they've seen and heard and known yeah. and just presenting that in, yeah. a, in a new and fresh and mm. Hopefully, God breathes inspiring way. So Definitely. that's why I love it, is because actually it's just taking what's already there, yeah, um, and making it perhaps um, more tangible for people. So Definitely, true, you know, the nature of God to be mm. seen in visual form in some way is yeah, quite amazing. That's good. I just love how Shelley Giglio said when she opened the conference. She spoke about how um, they believe. Everything about passion is to make Jesus known. Yeah, that's so cool. And so whether it's the person holding the door or the coffee cup that you're drinking from or the room that you're in, it's all for his name, mm. to make him known. Yeah, um, so And I would beautiful. say that really my heart really resonated with that. I feel like our creativity, our expression, the things that we endeavor to do yeah, here at all start in that place. Definitely. And um, that we really want to see Jesus expressed in <clears throat> yeah. different creative, exciting ways so yeah. that everybody would be able to see him. Yeah. That he would be made famous, be made known. Um, I love and that. I get excited about seeing how that evolves and yeah. um, grows in the future. Because yeah. one of the things we've said at Sisterhood is that, um, particularly with our Awakening Conference, is that I want to – when we look back in years to come, I want to be able to say, like, this conference, um, it it's known yeah. for its creativity mm-hmm. and its prof- prophetic age. Yeah, so good. That we were people that went after those two things, mm-hmm. not for the sake of just doing them, but yeah. because yeah. they reveal the heart of the Father, they yeah. reveal Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I wanted to talk to some of the ways that perhaps you're looking at bringing in um, – so let's practically talk about what that looks like. How do we make Jesus tangible to people through creativity? So let's look at this last sisterhood that we did. Like what were some of the things that you put together? And we <laughs> oh, had wow. a whole theme. But just to show people that this has a starting point. It has yeah. – there is a main thing behind it all. Mm. And so what you see visually actually had yeah. – there was a process to it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Wow. Let's tell her then about the process. I think the process is obviously coming together as a team mm. and hearing, obviously, taste your the heart. The vision. Yeah, the heart. Your vision. What is God speaking, saying to you? Yeah. Um, what is God saying to Ash? Um, how is that aligning up? Where Where are we going? Where is this journey going mm. on in terms of creatively? And it's in words. It's in... Mm. Mm. Yeah, and I'm so much like, more word-based than visual. Yeah. Which I think is so profound and beautiful and helpful because sometimes we need the language to what we're seeing. Hundred (laughs) percent, clink. (laughs) Puzzle comes together exactly. Um, Yeah, so I think that's I'd say where we start. Yeah, that's where we start because for us, it's never actually um, it's never actually about our project to be honest. And that's for me is probably one of the most special things about being a creative that gets to build church. Yeah. Because creatives globally and in a (laughs) secular world are artists with their name on things. You create here and your name is not on anything, (laughs) which is freeing, (laughs) actually, actually, but it's humbling. It is humbling. I just wanted to remind us of all of that um, that quote. Um, Phil Dooley actually said it. He said, it's amazing what we can achieve when we don't care about who gets the credit. It's so true. And you're creating from that standpoint, like, Absolutely. No one's going to know. Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> um, 
I actually have a funny story. Can I just add yeah, please? Because Ash was story. telling me was yesterday telling about you, it. This is a perfect example of a moment where you just won't get, you, it's not about your credit. Um, we went, we did our vision shoot last year and we um, went. To the crew. We went to the crew, yeah. but we traveled around the country um, with Pastor on this amazing creative trip, which was to capture Move, the invitation to go a little further. And Dill said, the only way that we're going to translate the vision of our house for this year is to put ourselves on that journey. So we did. And we were stretched, and one of the things we did was we climbed the Wolfberg Arch, which is a massive hike. Um, can I did them in new hiking boots. <laughs> I did them in new hiking boots because we were sponsored wow. boots for that shoot, which was so cool. These people were like, oh, you guys are going on the shoot, wear some boots, like in the yeah. show. I was like, cool. Rookie era, but that's not part of the story. There was this moment where Dill walked to the edge of the cliff and just looked like out over the mountains. Um we could probably even, I'll, I'll hand the picture and maybe we can pull it up in yeah, this conversation. We must do that. He looks out over the mountains and you can tell he's having a God moment. And I just happened to have, we had cameras on us, but I took that shot. And it's probably one of my most favorite photos I've ever taken. It's like, so cool. It just captured what we were doing, what we were feeling, what God was saying in the middle of nowhere. Um, and I thought like when, whenever you see that photo, it's actually printed downstairs. Yeah. Um, you just know like we we're on a journey with God in that moment. Anyway, so Jean and our creative team comes to us. He says, Ash, I've submitted your photo for a competition <laughs> in Cape Town. And I was like, no ways. Thank you. You're amazing. Yeah. He's like, I just think it's such a great shot. And I've got, um, I knew I'd heard about this comp. And if it, if you make top 10, your prints will get featured on the waterfront. <laughs> and I was like, that is a big deal. That's like a big tourist zone. A lot I've of people see the visuals. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and he says, awesome. He comes to me the next week. He's like, your photo made top 10. And I was like, this is so cool. Like I wasn't even um, aiming to have a cool photo. Like we were just hiking and shooting in the moment. <laughs> And then it, it was printed huge at the waterfront. And my name's not on it. John's name's on it <laughs> because he submitted the photo for me. I love it. And I sat there and I said, God, you are so funny because this yeah. is exactly why we do what we do. Yeah. I wasn't there to take that photo to have my name on and take the credit. Like actually nothing. I never want my name on anything. Mm. Like yeah, the, just the beautiful adventure that you take so us on good, in, in creating. Is Ash, that you, you breathe that so yeah. beautifully. Honestly, you do. But I... I I'm so glad because, you know, we're actually not made for fame. No. And the minute people give you any, like, too much credit, too much actually credit. Gets, it's so it's just I'm like, But I no, love that. Whole that's a good story. Why. I think that's an amazing story because, you know what, it's very easy to sit back and go, oh, you know, that's amazing. It's another thing to have produced something that is exceptional yeah. and have someone else attach their name to it. Mm. Well, for, you know, the circumstances yeah. aside, I'm like, I don't care who you are. That is a moment where you're you're having to go, mm, do I really believe yeah, that yeah. I don't care who gets the credit? And, yeah. and I, I mean, I'm saying this, you model that well, you do. But I do think for all of us yeah. there in, who are creative people, yeah. there is this wrestle yeah. about, yeah. you know, who... Being known for your... Yeah, own. being known. But yeah. actually in church, when we create, it's to make him known. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's almost like some of that pressure's taken off. Mm. You know? And it's the beauty of... Um, creatives coming together so it's beyond it's yes you birth the vision of what God is saying in that moment but it's a whole bunch of other people come in on a journey mm. because they love creativity and they mm. also want to yeah. um, see that come yeah. to life yeah. in God's character absolutely but it's so beautiful to see a whole bunch of people mm. different backgrounds different mm. visions different creative like different creative backgrounds come together and make this happen yeah mm. absolutely and it's just i think for me that is also so incredibly like yeah. valuable and special so valuable yeah and i think so when we chat around creative process and what that looks like one of the best things that we're able to do is like like i said if we remove ourselves from yeah the the label of you're going to get the glory it actually disarms the competition oh. amongst us as creatives Absolutely. so we can go through that process yeah. without competing actually your idea is valuable yes. and it doesn't make my idea any less no. um less you can valuable put it all yeah. in the pot and go well, what's the and best that is thing? the golden thread like yeah. right there and so whether you're in a church or on a team and listening to this right now wow. like disarm the competition and you'll watch your creatives mm. flourish and I flourish think and have fun and have guys. fun creativity is fun and how amazing is it to see other creatives champion other creatives yeah. Yeah. I mean if I think about we 
if you look at a sisterhood, it has so many moving parts from digital to film to choreographers to environmental Mm. design to you pick up a print and that was a graphic element. So all of that works together and you're championing each other actually rather than that environment worked better than that one. No, Mm. and I think when Jesus is the main thing and he's still being – He's still the the thing yeah. we're talking about in each space. Yeah. The competition's out the window. Mm, um, that's so good. Yeah. So good. I would say like and that's the process really. Yeah. Um, mm. We learn a lot along the way. Mm. Um, what I love about Ling Church and would encourage you to have a similar culture within your own creative teams is we f- we fail for it and have permission <laughs> to take a swing at things. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that, that that's, yeah, that's it, so it creates yes. a boldness in you. You actually yeah. don't yes. scared to, to fail. Mm. I also mm. think it's amazing to have we create on a very low budget. Yeah. Yes. Um, I sometimes think like, look, we would love to do all the things. <laughs> Um, but I do sometimes feel like when you're forced to create and think of ways to get to your end point without just buying everything you need, yeah. Yeah. it does force us into a situation where we're Absolutely. having to think, you know, look for solutions, think out the box, yeah. go wide. Um, and, and reuse. So that's one of the things. Yeah, yeah, reuse what we've got. We we become quite industrious. Mm. Um, but I do love that about us. And I think we, we, we witness some of that a passion yeah. as well, just that. Yeah. You know what? What actually? What creative genius is in us? What have we got? And then yeah. let's take yeah, that forward. Yeah, that's good too. Mm. And we're going to end off now, but I'd love the two of you to just quickly give give our people watching today just one way that you um, that you feed your creativity. Mm, the one okay. thing that you do, and then I want to pray for our creative people, and we're going to finish off. You go first. So for me, um, I'd say okay. I love to paint I'm sure Ash also we're quite similar in some ways mm. but um I love to paint I love to sketch so I sketch often um they're not always beautiful things <laughs> like okay. I'm not a girl I'm not always got control people anyway um but yeah I love to sketch but I think for me being in nature is a huge thing wow. um yes. it sounds so like romantic but um genuinely it's true mm. it's I love true. to be in nature Amazing. I love to switch off it's a lot of the times and moments, um, stepping back, stepping away and just being and submersed in nature where God speaks to me. So um, good. and it's through, and it's through silly things like shapes. Uh, for me, it's through shapes and colors. Um, wow. I love that. Uh, textures. Texture. Yeah. So wow. yeah, that's how. I can see you too. Of course. <laughs> Yeah, so that's for me how awesome. I could turn this time. into a two hour podcast with the feedback. We should just do it. But sure. um so it's it's funny because you say that uh, you said at the beginning when you're even traveling with creative people, yeah. you can tell like everything is speaking to you down to a sign on a wall. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Like it's true. I would look and yeah. think, I wouldn't have used that font or that color really wow. translates. It's true. You actually can't turn it off, and that's a god thing, which is cool. But for me, what feeds my creativity, I'm uh, heavily influenced by my environments, Mm. what my office feels like, what my home feels like. If I'm creating and I need to go sit at a coffee shop, it's going to be a beautiful coffee shop. (laughs) I like, I love going to a little place in Belito where you can sit and you've got a little gallery around you. Often if I'm in creative mode, I'll go there because my environments feed me creatively. Oh, that's good, Ash. So for me, I'm making sure that I'm very intentional around if this is a space where I really want to just let it flow, I'm going to make sure that I'm in a space that and that um, sparks good. something. Good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Amazing. I hope that this has encouraged you today. Um, we love creativity here. And so, yes, we could speak for hours yes. and perhaps we should in the future. But we're going to say goodbye now. And be- but before I do that, I just want to pray for any of you. And I just felt now as you we were speaking that I'm feeling like a bit stuck in your creativity, not sure what to do next. want to pray for you and trust that your next season of creating would be one that is free flowing and mm. fresh yeah. and that you would find a new energy for it um, in Jesus yeah. name. Come and on. so thank you, Jesus, for the gift of creating that you have put mm. in humanity. We thank you that father, you are the ultimate creator and, and you made us in your image. Yeah. And so we are just so grateful for the privilege of being able to create so that you would be made known. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just want to pray for anyone watching today who feels like they're in a bit of a slump, 
Uh, like there is a bit of a blockage. Um, I just want to pray for a fresh flow of your spirit. I want to pray for inspiration. I want to pray for opportunities to get into environments yeah, that cultivate a creative flow in you. I want to thank you, Jesus, for capacity to see, uh, to see the colors and the shapes and the just the glorious things that you've placed around us and then to recreate them so yeah, that others Jesus. will see the tangibility of our God here on earth. Thank you that everything yes, that we create speaks and so would our creativity speak of the one who is the greatest of all then that is yeah. you Jesus that is you Jesus. father and I just thank you I thank you for the creative people in our churches yeah. the ones who create without any credit we just want to pray the father's blessing over you and we just want to honor you and we want to believe that your best days lie ahead of you in Jesus name Amen. You're also invited. Amen. Please come and be creative with us. Yes. Come on. If you're following church, invitation. you need to do that. Join the creative come club. Come on. It's a fun space to be in. But we love you. Thank you for all that you do, all that you are. And we'll see you soon. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of the Link Sisterhood podcast. We hope this conversation has stirred something within you, whether it's a new perspective, a deepened desire to be with Jesus, or simply a reminder of God's unwavering love for you. Be sure to subscribe for some more sisterhood conversations, messages, and moments, and connect with us on social media at the Link Sisterhood. Until next time, lots of love.